Now here's Derek Jones to introduce Music in My Pocket, a portrait of a character who's a very familiar face on the streets of Bristol. Raymond Frankham has lived in Bristol for most of his life. For more than 50 years, he has composed sacred music. But until now, he's never had a note of it performed or a bar of it published. Ray has done a variety of jobs. Among them, he's been a delivery boy, first for an ironmonger's shop in Eastville, and then for 17 years for a jeweler in Colston Street. In 1967, they no longer needed him, and he became a jobbing gardener. But whatever he's been doing, his passion for composing has remained, and his manuscript book is never far away. Piecing together Ray's enigmatic life is fascinating because wherever you go around Bristol, people seem to have seen him. Oh yeah, he, he comes in every now and again and has a cup of tea and a cheese sandwich and always says sweet girls. <laughs> he comes every Tuesday to garden for me and he even came one day when it was snowing. So conscientious. Someone else who knows him is George Garlic, organist of St George's, Brandon Hill. He was at school at the same time, and his father was a musical man, and he encouraged music amongst the boys at the school. Ray lives in a rented room in Hotwells, just beside where the old Campbell steamers used to take on their passengers. He shares a top-floor bedsitter with two friends, Charlie and George. Charlie he's been with for four years, and George for 20. And a lady on the ground floor, Noreen, cooks for them. I am up in the morning, it's about half past seven, when we have breakfast at eight o'clock. I'm usually off about between half past eight and nine, going to wherever was on, on my list. I know where I, which ones I go to, I get that set, all cut and dried. <laughs> It can commonly take Ray more than an hour to walk to his first gardening job, often in the Clifton or Redland area. And not that he can't find time, however, for the occasional breather. We're practically nowhere. Really, very nowhere. The cloud is over here. Nine thirty, and the day's work begins. Ray went to St Gabriel's School, Easton where his father, who was the headmaster, sensed that his son was musical and arranged for him to have organ lessons. Ray began composing on his own with the help of library books. George Garlick gave those organ lessons, and I asked him about rumours that Ray's time at the school, as the son of the head, had not been a happy one. Boys are pretty rough with each other, as you know. If they've only got to get a down on a boy and he's for trouble, then anything can happen. I think he had a pretty rough passage in the school days. 
he was he was a loner uh, he was never mixed very much with the other boys Kitty, please. I think Kitty. he's been a loner all his life. Kitty. Anyone that's a little bit different to the usual mob, the book, that's Kitty. what it is. Someone different. Oh. After he left school, he never seemed to get down to get a regular job. He was always going about getting odd jobs. He made a bit of money. Enough to sort of live on, but he was—he lived on his own. He was a, a loner, absolutely a loner, right through. Lunchtime and Ray breaks from his gardening. In a nearby cafe, he presses on with his musical ideas. Once I get this start, I can carry on by something that won't come next. And children I hear occasionally in my head when I'm out working. It's a queer sort of imagination, I know. The more facts we found out about Ray Frankham, the more intriguing he became. We met in Commercial Road to go through some of them. Then after that, your grandfather, he was rather famous too. He became Lord Mayor of the city, didn't he? That's right, yes. That's right, yes. When was that? About 19... 19... 1920. 19, 19, 1920. And today we've got this fantastic block of modern flats up here. Frankham House. That's right. Named after the Lord Mayor of the family. That's right. But is his music of any value? To get it professionally assessed, we took it to Dr. John Bishop, who lives in High Kingsdown. He's the principal lecturer at the Birmingham School of Music. Well, let's see what we've got here. Now, quite a simple, straightforward, almost hymn tune-like style setting of the opening of the communion service reminds me of the work of some mid-19th century Victorian composers like Dykes and Barnby, even Stainer maybe. One or two rather nice touches here. This looks really rather beautiful. setting of the words from For Us Men and For Our Salvation. Certainly knows how to write the voices. Ah, now this is interesting. He doesn't know how to resolve the seventh. Hasn't, in fact, learned all the rules of the game. And, oh, some consecutive fifths. Again, he hasn't quite assimilated all the conventions of music of the period. Well, what about your rating of, of the works as a whole? I mean, putting another way, would you be prepared to put this on, or part of it, as a sung Eucharist? Oh, yes, I think um, one could certainly um, put on a very effective performance of this um, uh, as, a, as a Eucharist. One would actually want to uh, meet the composer and talk to him a little. Um, to find exactly what he's got in mind. Hello, my old friend, how are you? That evening we found Ray in the Beaufort Arms on the Downs. He finds as much inspiration in pubs as he does in cafes. We told him of Dr. Bishop's offer and that he would like to meet him and explained that the performance would be a proper sung communion service, which is what Ray loves, and not just a concert. I'm not sure he quite believed us, and we left him doing what he likes best, making music.
I no reason to be scared if I'm out. People ask me, what does God look like? Where is he? How could anyone answer a question like that? It's not easy. I put that to many priests. They say, well, you can't tell no one's ever seen God. How do we know he's there if we can't see him or if we can't hear him? And I felt at night, when any night I'd been out, that somehow he has been with me. Is that the reason why nobody has set on me with these bugging, with these hooligans? Not yet. I see thee not, I hear thee not. Thou art off with me. Well, those words seem to have stuck in my mind quite a lot lately. What I should like to find out, who was ever the first to write a musical setting for the service was really the first person to do it. Here you are, Mr. Frankham. Here's a cup of tea for you. How are you getting on? I'm all right. How are you, my dear lady? All right, Communion means you're having some connection with God and with Jesus. Where are you going to have this? I don't need How can I explain? This is my body. Take heat, he said. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And the wine was his blood. Now, some people seem to think that, well, God, because people have done wrong, will he condemn them? I, I should say, no. God is willing to forgive a sinner, but it's a sin he doesn't like. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. That afternoon, Ray arrives at John Bishop's house to meet him for the first time. It is something, you know, that it is going to be before, but I never thought before that this was possible that could happen anywhere. Mr. Uh, Frankham, yes, hello. Yes, nice yes, to yes. see you. Welcome. Yes. I'd like to introduce Margaret, yes. who's Hello. going to sing for us. Nice make to see you. See you in a moment. Yes. Do you mind if we call you Ray? Pardon? Can we call you Ray? Oh, yes. Fine, well, let's go on and get to the piano, shall we? A strong lady. Come in. Let's go. Can you come in Sorry. first? That's right. Good. Lovely. She's going to sing a bit of the, um, the Agnes Day from this F major service. So we'll go straight ahead into that without any further ado. didn't write the opening of that Agnes um, for a solo voice, but do you quite like it as a solo? Oh, yes, it sounds all right, yes. How do you find these lines, Margaret, to sing as a vocalist? They're very, very vocal, very easy to sing. Mm. So, and uh, um, very nice shapes, actually. Splendid. St. Paul's Church, Portland Square, was chosen for the service, and October the 23rd, the date. Ray was there punctually at six o'clock for the final rehearsal. End of the phrase. Do what ever so just, so that we get the chording absolutely together with you all at the beginning of the next phrase. Two, three. We are a little bit inconsistent about 
Um, page 12, end of the second line. Could we just have a go at the beginning of that second section? Rehearsal over, the service proper began at 8 o'clock. And here now are some moments from it.
which you'll sing our closing hymn number 550, Angel Voices Ever Singing. Well, yes, we know it was, that. Yeah. We know that very yeah. much indeed. Yeah. But did you enjoy hearing it performed tonight yeah. in church? Yeah. I thought it was lovely. Beautiful music. I thought particularly in the creed, there's one point to me about suffering. And I just thought, you know, looking, you probably knew what it meant about suffering. And that, that bit where the music died and then the glory sort of came, came back, it was lovely, wasn't it? It meant something to yes. him, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I saw you uh, near Bishopston. You were in a garden. It was really quite a moving experience, I think, on the part of those of us who actually were responsible for leading it, as it were. The line itself had really quite something to offer. The harmony, marvellous. There is something about, about what's, what's in there, which is, you can take out and say, That's, that just belongs to him. It's, it's, it's rather good. Rest not day or night, told and lonely, live to bless thee, and confess thee all on my... I thought that it went all right. I was so sort of thrilled, I thought so. Yeah, is that my own writing? And I've achieved that. I think I feel different, more confident, I say, about doing this work. Probably maybe have here. I never thought it would come to this. Somebody would be wanting it. Sure that I've done something really useful thing. What is man? People say, Well, what a silly question to ask, but is it? Psalm number eight. What is man that thou art mindful of him? I don't think we don't know what man is. I love you. 